let's look at configuring Cisco routers with static routing. So we're going to use static routing to configure Cisco routers. So I have a nice little diagram of my network right here. I have my PC right here, which is configured right now at 172.16.02. Uh, it's connected to a switch. The switch is connected to my Portland router. Portland is 172.16.01. The PC has its default gateway already set to be the Portland router. So at this point, I should be able to use my PC and ping the Portland router and actually ping both interfaces because the Portland router knows about my network. Now, trying to ping across the connection between um, Portland and Seattle router will not work because the Seattle router does not know how to get back to my network. And then obviously I won't be able to ping the IP address on the other side of the connection. So let's look at static routing and making that all work. All right. So first of all, let's jump into my command prompt and just ping to test things. So um, I am 172.16.02, so I'm going to ping 172.16.0.1, which is my default gateway and router. I can ping that one okay. That is on the Portland router. I can also ping 192.168.0.1. .1, which is the other interface on the Portland router. And those ones are supposed to work. Now, if I try pinging the interface on the Seattle router, which is the other side, it does not work because Seattle does not know where the 172.16.00 network is, so it cannot send anything back. So let's go and make some configuration changes. Here we are in Portland. <coughs> And we're going to go into privilege mode. And now we're going to look at a routing table. We can see that I know about my direct routes, but what I don't know about are the routes on the other side of Seattle. So I know that if I want to go from Portland over to this network on the other side of Seattle, I may have to send it to the Seattle router. The Seattle router is the 192.168.02. And so we're going to read the uh, 172.17.0.0 slash 24 network. I have to go through the Seattle router. <clears throat> so let's configure that first. So we go call T and we do a route, IP route. And it's going to the 172.17.0.0 and slash 24. So that'd be 255.255.255.0. And the way I get there is through 192.168.0.2. <clears throat> now I can go and check my routing table to make sure that took correctly. Show IP route. <clears throat> Now, at this point, I should be able to still um, not have anything new because it doesn't know how to get back. However, I should be able to send a ping request across. Actually, from this router, I should be able to get something back now. I should ping. Uh, one, first, I'll ping my Seattle router, 192.168.0.2. And that pings the Seattle router just fine. Now, if I want to ping the other side of the Seattle router, I can now, I should be able to now do that. So ping 172.617.0.2. So and that pings across. <clears throat> now, just because I can ping through doesn't mean that the Seattle router um, knows how to get stuff back to me. Um, I mean, obviously, everything from the Portland router did go to the Seattle router and back. If I try going from my computer, if I try pinging that same IP address, still, the you can see that the Seattle router cannot get a ping back to me. So the Seattle router does not know about my network that the, the PC is in. It does not know about the 172.16 network. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and change my network configuration so that I am connected, all my console configurations are connected to the Seattle router instead of the Portland router. 
the center here. Now we're the Seattle router. And I enable. All right. So I type in show IP route. You can see that there is a route to my 172.17 and the 170, uh, 192.168. Zero, zero network right there. Okay. So if I want to get back, get communication back from the 172.17 all the way over to the 172.16, I need to know about 172.16. So let's go in and make computer changes. So add or out IP route. 172.16.0.0 and that is a slash 24 so it's 255.255.255.0 and the way I get there is through the Portland router which is 192.168.0.1 all right so now I can exit out of this and I should be able to ping all the way over to the other side of the router there. So I ping 172.16.0.1 and I can ping across. At this point, we should have pings working all the way from my client all the way over to their side. So let's switch back to the client right here, the PC client. Now if I try pinging the 172 192.168.0.2 I can ping it because the Seattle router sees that it knows where the 172.16 network is and so it sends it back to the Portland router which sends it to me and if I try pinging all the way across 172.17.0.1 it gets all the way over to the other interface of the Seattle router. The Seattle router then knows how to get stuff back and it sends it back. If I were to add a PC to the other side of this connection, right over here, connected to the last switch next to the Seattle router, <clears throat> I would be able to send a ping all the way to that Seattle router, and the ping would get from that to a device in that switch. However, the PC uh, connected to the Seattle router switch would then need to make sure it had its default gateway set to the Seattle router in order to get data all the way back. So it's a little bit complicated. Normally what we want to do is you make sure your PC has a default gateway to a router that knows about all the networks. If it were more than just two routers here, it would be a lot more complex and you would need to add a lot more, a lot more routes. Currently all I had to do was add two routes because Portland didn't know about this route on Seattle and Seattle didn't know about this route on Portland. If there were a third router added to this mix, then you suddenly have to add lots more routes. So static routing works fine for just two routers. When you get a lot more routers, it becomes very complex very quickly, which is why we use routing protocols to share routes. Anyway, that's static routing.